Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Ashur. Today, we are going to continue uh, our series about pharmacologic treatment of heart failure. Previously, we talked about the pathophysiology of heart failure, which was the first subtopic. Uh, today, we are going to discuss the second subtopic, which is drugs for the management of heart failure. And we are going to start right now. So, as you see, uh, the topic of today is drugs for the management of heart failure, where we quickly will review the pathophysiologic mechanisms of heart failure. And today, we will uh, discuss the major sites of drug action. We'll discuss the diuretics beneficial effects in heart failure and how they exert their effects. We'll talk uh, about the different types of vasodilators, specifically those that are useful for treatment of heart failure and their mechanism of action. So quickly, like a little review, okay, heart failure, when the patient has heart failure, means there is a decrease in the cardiac output. And if you remember uh, the uh, compensation mechanisms, one of them is the sympathetic nervous system activation. And this will uh, lead to vasoconstriction. Okay. This uh, vasoconstriction can elevate the uh, uh, cardiac filling pressure, which can lead to uh, cardiac remodeling. Sympathetic nervous system activation also can activate beta receptors and the juxtaglomerular cell, glomerular cells in the kidney to uh, release uh, renin. Renin activates angiotensin 1, and uh, with the action of the enzyme angiotensin converting enzyme, uh, angiotensin 1 is converting into angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 itself is a very potent vasoconstrictor. It also facilitates aldosterone release. Aldosterone itself can cause sodium and water retention and also elevate cardiac filling pressure. Okay. Uh, angiotensin 2 also can cause remodeling. So, three things can, uh, angiotensin 2 can do the vasoconstriction, uh, uh, facilitating aldosterone release and cardiac remodeling. Okay. So the, for the uh, pharmacologic treatment, so now the patient has heart failure, okay, specifically the systolic heart failure. So we can use inotropic agents, agents that can enhance the contractility of the cardiac muscle, like digoxin, and also increase the cardiac output. Uh, for the sympathetic nervous system activation to activate beta receptors in the juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney, so we can use beta blockers. Uh, for the conversion of renin into angiotensin 1, we can use renin inhibitors like aliskerine. Uh, conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, we can use ACE inhibitors, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. Uh, angiotensin 2 to act on its receptor. We can use, uh, we can inhibit this by using angiotensin uh, receptor uh, AT1 receptor antagonists, AT1 receptor antagonists, also called as uh, called uh, ARBs, angiotensin receptor blockers, uh, to inhibit the action of aldosterone. We can use aldosterone antagonists such as spironolactone. Okay. Angiotensin 2 can cause vasoconstriction. We can use vasodilator, okay. Uh, and ARBs also can cause vasodilation. So angiotensin 2, uh, our ACE inhibitors can cause vasodilation, okay. And ARBs cause vasodilation also. Uh, when, uh, to stop the sodium and water retention, we can use diuretics like, uh, 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 spir like spironolactone, Epilirinone and others. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, uh, these uh, drugs, when we use them, can decrease the cardiac remodeling, which is represented by progressive chamber dilation, loss of contractile function, and ventricular hypertrophy. 
Okay, so now these are the classes that we have. Uh, diuretics, vasodilators, beta blockers, and then this class, this class will be discussed in the last topic, which, has posit which are positive enotropic drugs, like cardiac glycosides, phosphodiesterase inhibitors, specifically phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors, and beta agonists. Have you ever seen agonists and antagonists are used for the same disease? Okay, we will see this, how this could, how could this happen? Okay, so start with the diuretics. They are drugs of choice in heart failure. Very preferred class of drugs. Uh, they are, uh, uh, remain central in the, man in the pharmacologic management of congestive symptoms in patients with congest congestive heart failure because they can, they can facilitate diuresis, okay? So they decrease the sodium water retention, so decrease the congestion, okay? Um, actually, because of the frequent use of the risks in uh, congestive heart, heart failure management, this reflects that the deleterious downstream effects of volume expansion on increased left ventricular and diastolic volume, okay? Which is an intermediate step in the development of elevated right-sided heart failure, okay? Or elev elevated right uh, heart, uh, heart pressure, right heart pressure, because the, 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 the end-diastolic volume or the venous return is coming to the, to what? To the right atrium, okay? And then right ventricle. So that's why this is reflected on the right heart, increased right heart pressure, which can cause if there is, if there is increase in the uh, uh, right side of the heart, increased pressure in the right side of the heart, heart this will, uh, will cause pooling of the blood or will, will cause pressure in this and will uh, uh, cause congestion of all the tissues that are perfusing to the heart, which are everybody, everything, every tissue in the, heart, in the body except one, okay? All are perfusing through the, superior, the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava, and they uh, uh, perfuse through to the uh, right atrium, right? So, uh, so they uh, act on the kidney to enhance, of course, we'll discuss them in details later, uh, but uh, quickly they enhance sodium and water excretion. So they increase uh, uh, urine output and decrease blood volume. So they can decrease blood pressure actually also, okay, as we'll see later. So they decrease extracellular uh, fluid volume and in turn decrease venous pressure. Venous pressure, okay? That's coming to the right atrium. And the ventricular filling pressure. So they decrease the preload. When you decrease the preload, if you remember in the angina pictures, if, you decrease, if there is increase in the preload, this will increase the oxygen demand. If you decrease the, 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 the preload, this can decrease the cardiac workload and oxygen demand. They are also uh, useful in uh, reducing the symptoms of uh, volume overload, including any congestion, uh, including uh, or, uh, like pulmonary congestion, specifically like orthopnea, we talked about before, which is the uh, uh, short sense of breath or dyspnea when the patient is lying flat, okay, or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, which occurs during night. Uh, in heart failure associated with hypertension, the reduction in heart and blood pressure can decrease the afterload because now there is less blood to push, so now the afterload on the heart is less, so the heart can pump easily. Uh, examples like the loop diuretics like furosemide, torsemide, bumetanide, and the potassium sparing diuretics, which will be discussed in the next slide like spironolactone and epilirinone. They are potassium sparing diuretics, okay? Sparing, spirono, maybe it will help you as a mnemonic, okay? Sp uh, potassium sparing diuretics. <clears throat> they are aldosterone antagonists. You remember aldosterone itself was involved also in cardiac remodeling, it was involved in sodium water retention, right? So they decrease morbidity and mortality in patients with severe heart failure. So this is very important. It's not just, just the mechanism, because sometimes you have the mechanism, but when you go to the clinical studies, no, uh, no further improvement, okay, that can, um, that can confirm 
that these are viable studies in clinical point of view. Uh, so the, the decrease in morbidity and mortality in patients with severe heart failure who are also receiving ES limiters and other standard therapies. Mechanism for this benefit, aldosterone itself can cause myocardial and vascular fibrosis and baroreceptor dysfunction. If you remember, we talked about the compensation mechanism, the three mechanisms. There was, I said, there is an issue in the baroreceptor reflex, which is caused here by the uh, catecholamines and also caused by the, uh, the aldosterone. Okay, so uh, in addition to its renal effect, like sodium and water retention, as we mentioned. So this, uh, uh, that's why aldosterone antagonists can reverse these effects. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, eplerinone is more selective for the mineralocorticoid receptor. We need the mineralocorticoid receptor. We don't need the androgen receptor. Spironolactone, unfortunately, can bind to the mineralocorticoid receptor, which is OK. But it also can bind to androgen receptors so it may, can cause impotence, gynecomastia, and other side effects. So epilirinone is preferred. OK, now the, we finish with the diuretics. The second class is the vasodilator, which is a huge class, includes at least the ACE inhibitors and ARBs and utensin receptor blockers. We'll talk about these in details in the next video of this video, but we'll give the introduction about vasodilators right now. Okay, um, these are the uh, classes of vasodilators, generally speaking, but I'm selecting the uh, classes that are associated with uh, improve, uh, improvement in the mortality, like uh, organic nitrates, okay, like nitroglycerin, glycerin, isosorbate, uh, dinitrate. Their mechanism of action is uh, nitroxide mediated vasodilation. We mentioned this mechanism before, last year. Okay, uh, again, just a revision, nitric oxide activate is, is similar to GSPCR, G protein coupled receptors from the type S. Uh, this one activates guanylate cyclase, nitric oxide activates guanylate cyclase, which converts GTP into cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP activates pro uh, 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 protein kinase G, which will uh, cause vasodilation. This class of organic nitrates, and low, uh, uh, organic nitrates, generally speaking, they uh, actually work on more on the decreasing the preload, because we are venodilators mainly. Okay, the effect on uh, afterload is minimal. Okay, uh, then uh, the, uh, the very important critical, very, very important class in treatment of heart failure, which is the ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Uh, ACE inhibitors such as captopril, inalapril, lisinopril, okay, fusinopril, and others, kinapril, you know, this suffix pril make it easy for you to remember. Good mnemonic to know that this class is uh, uh, ACE inhibitor. They inhibit angiotensin uh, two generation and decrease, this is, this will be a side effect, will be discussed in the next lecture, bradykinine degradation. They are both, they decrease both preload and afterload. Same with the ARBs, but ARBs like losartan, candy sartan, val sartan, the suffix sartan is uh, distinctive for this class. They inhibit the receptors of angiotensin 2, uh, specifically AT1 receptor. Why? Well, what's the benefit of that? We'll discuss this in the next video. Okay, uh, the other class is the potassium channel uh, agonist, such as uh, hydralazine. It's mainly, it mainly it decreases the afterload. It's mainly arteriodilator. Mechanism is actually is not known. Uh, finally, these uh, two classes uh, of the uh, beta alpha-1 antagonists, such as uh, carbidilol and levilabitalol, we'll talk about them uh, later. Um, um, uh, in the second part of this lecture, in the next video, and beta uh, agonists will talk about them in the, at the end of the next uh, topic, which is enotropic agents. So we'll not discuss them now. Okay, so uh, vasodilators are effective in acute heart failure because they can reduce preload, such as 
in Israel trinitrate, isosorbine uh, uh, dinitrate. They cause pooling of blood in uh, systemic capacitance vessels and reduce ventricular and diastolic pressure and volume. So they decrease preload. So there is the, this will decrease the oxygen demand. Uh, they, uh, the other classes uh, decrease after loads such as hydralazine. It's actually mainly, it uh, uh, dilates specifically the, uh, the arteries, okay, especially the aorta. And uh, so even weaker ventricular contraction can pump more blood. So if you, if you cause arterial, arterial dilatation, okay, so the, the heart can pump the blood into a big hose as compared to tight holes, it will have a big pressure. You can, you know, just try at your garden, if you use the hose and just make it narrow, you push, you see the pressure of the water goes, you know, high. If you release, the pressure goes slow, goes low, and the water just fall next to you. Okay, or both drugs that decrease both preload and afterload, such as we talked about the ACE inhibitors, and the RBs, they decrease both, and also sodium nitroprusside, which works by exactly the same mechanism as glycerol trinitrate, or similar mechanism exactly, by uh, uh, nitroxide mediated vasodilation, as we explained before. So, so many vasodilators are known, but the ones that improve congestive heart failure symptoms, okay, uh, so these are the drugs. Uh, that are associated with improved survival, okay? So these, these, these three classes are the classes that are associated with improved. So these are the ones that show uh, good effects in the clinical studies, such as hydralazine, isosurpy dinitrate combination, and ACE inhibitors, as well as uh, angiotensin receptor blockers, okay? That's it for now. Thank you, and we'll see you in the second part of these drugs used for treatment of heart failure. Uh, until then, I will uh, talk to you later and see you and wish you a wonderful day.